Today we're already on week three of our stewardship preaching series. And uh, as you can recall that the first time, just in case you forget, Father Eve was preaching and he was uh, primarily dealing with the question of the, the, the what of stewardship, right? This idea of, you know, what, what belongs to God? What do we give to God? And, and the answer was almost uh, shifting from a what to a who. It's what belongs to God? Me, you, right? We belong to God and we have to give ourselves to him in the fullness of who we are and be ever grateful for his many gifts and to, and to find joy in being generous with ourselves, you know, in our time, talent, and treasure, you know, and the second week, we shifted more from the what of stewardship to the why. And Deacon Art was preaching and explained to us this aspect of stewardship within the light of the golden rule, right? To love God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love our neighbor as ourself. And how Jesus embodied this teaching and lived it. He gave his whole life for love of the Father and love of us, right? And he gave all of himself. So we give ourselves, and so Jesus shows us the why. We're doing it because of love. I love God the Father. I want to give everything back to him because of his love for me. I want to give to everyone else because, you know, of love for people, right? And so this idea of the why is rooted in this deep love of God and neighbor. So now we're shifting into more, not the what of stewardship or the, the why, but now the how. How do we do this? And I'd like to begin by reflecting initially on this concept of St. Paul's letter to the Thessalonians, where he's saying to them that the Thessalonians were receiving the teachings of, of St. Paul and the, those that were there in Thessalonica preaching the first words of, of the Christian faith. And they re- he says that they received that teaching not as human teaching, but as it really is, the Word of God. And I think that's a really important concept for us to think about because so often we can be in a human mindset of this whole stewardship idea, we hear about, oh, we're going to give teachings on stewardship and everything, and suddenly we kind of, I, I don't know about you, but I kind of start to tune out because I'm thinking, oh, here we go. It's like kind of a, feels like a human teaching almost. Like, okay, we need more money, we need more volunteers, we need more this and that. And I, and I realize there, there kind of has to be a, a conversion within our hearts to appreciate that this isn't just human teaching, this is the Word of God for us. This is part of what it means to be a missionary disciple, right? Which is what we want to be, you know, and part of the mission of our parish. And so, if this is part of how we need to live, it's, this, it's because it's God's teaching. This isn't just some human idea, right? And so, it's important for us to, to have a conversion of heart of maybe on the one side feeling, first of all, like, I'll give of my time, talent, and treasure because I have to, and shifting over to, I'll give of my time, talent, and treasure because I need to. It's part of what I need to, to experience more fulfillment and fullness of my Christian walk. Or maybe it's a shift from, okay, I'll give of my time, talent, treasure with whatever I have left over. If I get around to it, I'll do it for sure. To shifting over to, I'm going to give what's right of my time, talent, and treasure. And just like the fish and loaves that were offered to Jesus, there's, there's, then there'll be lots of leftovers after. I'll give what I can, and then hopefully they'll, God will magnify it, and there'll even be more leftovers. You know? So there's a conversion of our hearts. So even before I get into the how of stewardship, I think we first of all need to look into our own hearts and say, yeah, like when I hear about this, do I kind of tune out or kind of get, is it kind of a heavy, is it almost like a, a burden to hear about? It's like, oh, here we go again, you know, because it's like we're still thinking, I'll give because I have to, or I'll give if I get around to it with what I have left over. And if there's any part of our hearts that's still like that in some way, let's pray for that grace to, to shift and have that conversion to rather, I want to give because I need to, to be fulfilled as a disciple. And I want to give what's right to give, not just what's left over. And, and if we can have that attitude, if we see this not as human teaching, but as the word of God, then it changes the attitude towards stewardship, right? It's, it's, and, and it makes it something special. Because we need this as part of our walk. I think a lot of statistics of modern churches right now show that if you look at any you know, parish community, faith community, it seems to be about 7% is those who are mostly doing the giving of time, talent, and treasure. 7% of the people are carrying most of the load of the, all the volunteering and all the, you know, the financial contributions and all, the, all that stuff, right? And, and it's, when you think about it, it's kind of true. Like if, if we were a parish of 1,000 members, that means we'd have about 70 people that are really doing a lot of the, the volunteering and involvement. And I'd say we're about 
five and six hundred people, right? So about 35 to 40 people would be kind of our 7%, you know, and that's about right. We would look at the different choirs and lectors and extraordinary ministers of communion and the people helping out with the funeral committees or the alpha teams or the, and sometimes it's, it's some of the, the same people, but people doing live stream or serving or sacristans or you name it, all the things that it takes, you know, people to make sure the doors are unlocked and the heat's on and, the, and paid for and just in that, the, the, the driveway the, is being paid or plowed in the, in the winter and all that kind of stuff, you realize, man, it takes a lot of uh, hands to, to sort of make the things that we do here at the parish happen. And praise God for those 40 people or whatever in our parish that are really giving a lot. Now, we do have definitely a bit more than 40 people who are giving a lot, but there is, a, there is about that crew of the usual suspects who are really in there rolling up their sleeves and really going for it. And the idea is that as a community, we want to, to up that more. We want to grow in that area. Would that the heart and the spirituality of stewardship would be needed throughout the, the flower of all of who we are. Imagine if we could get that up to 100 people volunteering in, in, a, in a more sophisticated way with their time, talent, and treasure. That would really lighten the load of, of a lot of people. We could do this more together. But it's, that's kind of the reality that we're in these days in the, in the church. So it's a goal for us to want to, to see if we can, we can do better than that. We can do better than 7% of our people. And I think we already are in that direction. But there's always uh, a need. Because why? Because there's lots to do around here. Lots of hearts need to be touched. God wants to work through us. And so it's the more we can, you know, get engaged and and get plugged in and and get involved with our time, talent, and treasure, the more that God can do through us for for others. So that's my prayer for us, is that we can can grow from that seven or eight or whatever percent that we're at here at the parish to to even nine or ten percent or, you know, and more and more each year if possible. But initially it takes that conversion of heart from stewardship being just a human teaching to being the word of God for us and a way for God to fulfill his mission through us. So with the how of, of stewardship, I really think that we need a plan. We need to be, in other words, we need to be intentional about it. We just, just sort of stumble across it of what we give. We need to have some intentionality, right? We need a plan. We also, I think, need accountability. Some person or group of people that we're sort of regularly accounting to once in a while just to kind of make sure that we're keeping it real, right? And that we're, because on our own, we may, you know, be really generous one month of our time, talent, and then another year, not so much. We can kind of fluctuate if we're honest with ourselves, right? So it's good to have accountability. It's also good to have expectant faith, that God's going to take what we give and use it for amazing things beyond what we could even imagine, So if we have a plan, if we have accountability, if we have expectant faith, this will really help us to get to the next level of stewardship. I was thinking about the plan, right? If we're intentional about our time, then we need to have what? We need to have a schedule, right? We need to have enough of a grip of how we're spending our time that we can actually maximize our ability to make sure that we're getting our prayer time in there and our exercise and our re- relationship building and our times at church and our you know, ways w- where we want to be involved because we can either, because we can so, be so overbooked or busy all the time, but we need a schedule. We need a schedule to make sure that we're prioritizing what we need. When it comes to giving of our, of our treasure, well, we need a budget. Right? If we just sort of go willy-nilly or sort of hoping for the best you know, we might, you know, not have enough control of our finances to give with the priorities that we want to give. You know, because we get nickel and dimed by all the little subscriptions that we have that add up and we don't realize it or whatnot or other things. And we can, we can fail to miss, to hit the mark because uh, we don't have a budget. We don't have a, we're not intentional. Or maybe with regards to tithing and being stewards of our talent, what we need there is to have a, to be intentional is we need to discover, well, what, what are my gifts and how can I hone that more? How can I, like, uh, explore those gifts further and, and, and avail myself and volunteer myself to put those gifts into use for God, right? To sort of have a ministry that I can sort of align myself with, to plug in. Right? So unless we have a schedule or a budget or a good sense of our gifts and, 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 a, and a ministry to use them in, then it might not just automatically happen, right? We need to have a plan. And so that's my encouragement for us, is that if we really want to get serious about stewardship as a word of God for us to become missionary disciples, we need that plan. And there's something for us to actually, we have to take time to sit down and actually look at that. And and through our schedule, through our budget, through our assessment of gifts, we can then get the right priorities and make it happen. 
But then we need the accountability structure, right, to make sure that we're actually sticking with it. How often have we set New Year's resolutions and then by January 2nd we're kind of not doing so hot, right? It's kind of that same idea. We can, oh, have a great schedule and budget and assessment of gifts and whatever, and then, uh, oh, yeah, uh, manana, I'll do it tomorrow, you know. We'll get around to it later. And we, we sometimes fail to stick with it. So it's good. I know myself, I'm in a share group in the community that I live in, Father Eve and I and some other priests, we get together every two weeks and we share and, are, and pray with each other and we're, we're accountable to, you know, like, am I praying, am I exercising, am I whatever, those kinds of things. And it's good, it's good to keep me on track to like, yeah, this is how I want to live my life. This is what I want to, you know, be accountable to. And it's good to do that. It stinks when I haven't been doing a good job with things, I have to admit it, but it also is great when I have been doing it and I can say, yeah, I can feel that pat on the back, you know, it feels good. So accountability is important. Also, expect in faith. This is the main one. I think if we shift from thinking of stewardship as just human teaching to really seeing it as it is, as the word of God for us, then we can have expect in faith that God's calling it for, for his plan, his purposes. Right? That if we give our, of our time and talent and treasure to the best that we can, you know, then God's going to take it and he's going to magnify it. Just like we bring forth the bread and the wine to the altar, and then God takes it, and all of a sudden, beyond our wildest dreams, it becomes Jesus, body, blood, soul, and divinity for us, offered perfect offering to the Father, and then we get to receive that Eucharist, and it's like, whoa, like, look what the Lord did with what we gave him, right? And, and that's the kind of idea. So as we continue with this Mass, and we see what God does with what we offer, let that be a sign to us that God can, can use our offerings of time, talent, and treasure for things beyond our wildest dreams and to really trust in that. So my encouragement for us now is to, to take some time this week to make that plan, to, to find a person or people in our life that we are willing to be accountable to once in a while and to challenge ourselves to have expectant faith that it's not going to just, you know, go into Father Tim's vacation fund kind of thing, right? But it's going to actually be used for expectant faith for something amazing, right? For something great. And that's something that God wants for us as a Holy Trinity parish. God has great plans, and we need to up it from our 7% of involved to higher. So that more of us get engaged. God has things he wants to do in our families, in our neighborhood, things around us, getting us activated in our gifts. And I think, and so this really ought to start to get more exciting for us as we begin to witness God working in our midst, as we become explosively alive in the spirit, as we are being strengthened in community, and as we're going forth to renew the world in Christ. Amen.